Today I'm looking at my favourite Imperial faction, the Armageddon Steel Legions, and I'm going to be recreating some of their old metal infantry models by kit bashing and using a newer plastic kits. It's tabletop time! This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Revisiting Steel Legion is something that I've thought of for a while, a long while. So every time I think about what I'm going to do with my Steel Legion, I have to think, do I go with the old models? It's very expensive. Do I create something out of all these new models? But then it sort of loses the essence of Steel Legion and what made them really special to me and maybe so many other people. So I have a plan and I'm going to use just the Cadian set. Why? Because I want the possibility to recreate my whole army and extend beyond that. So, Katie, here it is. Now, as you might have surmised, I really love Steel Legion. Their backstory, their appearance, their whole aesthetic, it's super cool. And there's a few very important aspects of the Cadian design that I need to change to really get the feel of the Steel Legion. Number one, the big dusters or great coats that they all wear. That is iconic and needs to stay. Number two, the gas masks. That is one of the most iconic aspects of the entirety of the Steel Legion and one of the biggest parts of their lore. They need the gas masks to go out in this absolute hellscape that used to be their planet. And then we have point three, which is basically the whole leather aesthetic. All the really heavy leather welding gloves, big leather boots that come right up to the knee, but also a whole lot of leather pouches all about their person. So I'm gonna try and do my best to get all of that across in the aesthetic of what I'm gonna create here. So back to it. So what's really going around through my mind at the moment as I go through the sprue is how much can I change it with the least amount of effort? So I have the option to build lots and lots and lots of these guys because you can do insane changes to a model, but it's not really worth it if it's gonna take you an entire week to do one infantryman. So the trick is gonna be how much can I get away with while still creating something absolutely fantastic and unique. Luckily, having had this project on the back of my mind for about 10 years, I have a pretty good idea of exactly what I want to do. I really like the style of the Cadian helmet, so I'm actually going to keep that. And I have specifically chosen a model with the most open pose. And of course, I tried to select one of the las guns that has been cut down, or at least can be converted to be cut down. Basically no big rifle stock in the end. That's what I'm looking for. The Steel Legion are very World War II inspired and therefore they really only have the helmet as actual armor. So these shoulder pads need to come off and I'm just going to use a pair of snippers to get the bulk of them off, cleaning up with a knife afterwards. Same with the flak vest. I'm just going to cut away towards the edges of this to refine the shape down, no hard edges, and it will be easily disguised as fatigues. I want as chunky and as simple as possible. So a little dig in with the knife to get rid of all of these raised edges and we're good to go. So I finished assembly and prepping my model to do all the sculpting. And that's where the real difference is gonna come in to actually make it look like a Steel Legion character. We're gonna do the gas mask with the big ski goggles, the heavy boots and the gloves. I've really tried to keep all of the guns that have sort of the cut off stock carbine. That I think is also really important for having a really good Steel Legion vibe, the smaller LAS carbines basically, so they fit inside the transports better. That's really cool. But I am going to alternate it throughout the squads just to have a bit of character. That's also cool. It's time to grab some green stuff now and we'll tuck into it. To start off with the green stuffing, I'm going to warm up to it by simply applying small amounts of green stuff into the ridges and recesses that have been left behind and then smoothing it out will quickly rectify this and give the shape of folded fabric. So far, pretty easy. But now it's time to move on to the part that I've been most dreading and excited about converting, the gas mask. So I'm going to get a wad of green stuff that I think is going to fit and then I'm going to use a dampened toothpick to poke it into position. As for the area around the eyes, I'm keeping that fairly open as I'm going to apply the goggles next. Now this is going to be an even smaller piece of green stuff rolled into a tiny bean and push gently into place. Then with the same toothpick, dig into the center. This will create ridges around the edges that I will use as the rim of the glasses. Then by delicately pushing around the edges, I can craft the goggles into exactly the shape I want. Now this is one of the most satisfying parts of the hobby for me. Just taking something that was cool before, sure, but just turning it into something completely different and also getting to the gratifying moment of converting that it suddenly looks like something new and good. That's important. Being able to sit back and think, yes, that's what I want. That's always such a cool euphoric moment of this hobby. And I think it's definitely why people come back to it. They'll take a break, but then they'll come back. They'll be inspired, invigorated, and they'll just do something really cool. Have a look at this. Suddenly it's it's a new character. I'm just having a moment and I'm just going to share it with you. You're just going to have to deal with that. This is awesome. I'm getting so fired up. I'm going to do so many of these. <laughs> the oxygen tube was a bit more tricky as it was very delicate and very prone to getting bumped. However, taking my time was the key and I was able to get it exactly where I wanted. 
wanted. Then a few more touches of detail, some gubbins on the gas mask, and I can move on to the gloves. Again, just sticking a wad down on the forearm, I'm going to move it into place, smoothing it down and creating the shape I want. Next, I'll lengthen the fatigues into a longer coat to create interesting folds in the fabric as well. Then the final touch will be applying the fabric patch onto the left shoulder pad. And there we have it, the conversion is done. And here we have completed my Steel Legion Trooper. That's so cool. And you can see I've done some decoration onto the base. I'm going with my theme of all the factories that are on Armageddon, the huge Chimera production lines that are so big that, you know, there's entire battlefronts inside the factories. And so I'm basing my miniatures as if they're fighting inside a factory, but all the holes blown through the ceiling and letting all the arid desert in. So that is gonna be the theme for my bases, as that's also the theme for the faction, which is something I wanna talk about now. These are my 60 second Steel Legion Iron Coats, tasked with defending the very same factories that are producing Chimeras, not only for their outfits, but for so much of the Armageddon forces as well. That's the leaning I've always had for my particular aspect of the Steel Legion. And I named them Iron Coats mostly because I decided that I'd go with some really heavy trench coats, like some really flak padded trench coats that could absorb blasts, uh, las shots. So I created some really heavy trench coats. This is one of the standard Steel Legion. As is, nothing done to him, completely normal. However, I'll contrast that with, this guy's a bit fancy, he's the banner bearer. But you can see there's a heavy gray trench coat over the top of all the regalia that's on the Steel Legion trooper. And this is one of my veterans with the carapace armor that no longer exists anymore, but I still want to have some sort of way of signifying the namesake, the iron coats for my faction. And now the really cool news for this is that if you want to read up a little bit more on my 60 second iron coats, you can check out our tabletop time lore pages on Squarespace, which just happens to be the sponsor of this video. Now I make toy soldiers, not websites. So luckily Squarespace has my back. Their custom templates allow you to create dynamic web pages to better show off your products and aesthetic flair without needing a background in web design and coding. In fact, it's even more intuitive and easy to use now thanks to their new fluid engine, allowing you to drag and drop text boxes and images exactly how you want them for both mobile and PC platforms. But if that was too easy for you, perhaps you're ready to go even further and turn your website into a business with fully integrated tools to allow you to sell physical, digital and service products with the click of a button. Even if you have a physical store and you want to set up an online presence, by using the Square Reader, you can keep track of all your inventory in one place with their excellent POS system. In fact, at Tabletop Time, we're using Squarespace to create our own law library centered on all the forces and factions that we are featuring here on this channel. If you want to read more about my 60 second iron coats, check out the links in the description below. So if you want to take that final step and create your own website, go to squarespace.com slash tabletop time and get 10% off your first website or domain. Again, a huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and allowing us to talk even more about our factions. Back to the video. All right, time to start painting. To start off, I'm going to prime the entire model using black. Then following that, I'll apply several thin coats of Avalon Sunset to get a really nice finish over all of the fatigues, including the skin, as this will give me a lighter tone to work with later. I'm also not too worried about being messy here as the later colors are actually gonna be darker than the Avalon Sunset. So after I'm happy with the coverage of this ochre color, I'm gonna choose a really ruddy red brown and paint all of the leathers. This includes gloves, mask, boots, and all of the straps over the body. Then with that done, it's time to grab a more neutral brown. In my instance, I'm using Doombull Brown and Mournfang Brown respectively, and I'll apply that to all of the other areas that are gonna be hard or metallic. And the reason I'm base coating all of the areas of this model is that I'm actually going to do a lot of the work using just two washes. But before we get to that, it's time to paint the helmet and the gun casing. And to do that, I'm gonna use Deathworld Forest for that military green feel, and I'm gonna roughly overbrush that onto all the areas that aren't going to be silver metallic later. Now I'm gonna go fairly heavily, but I find that the streakier and more textured you apply this, the better it looks in the final product. Then using the same overbrush technique, I'm gonna paint all of the metals silver. And as a final step, I'm just going to put a dab of a skin tone onto the skin. Now the model's looking pretty basic at the moment, but don't worry, it's time to apply the washes now. And that's gonna bring all of the life and color into it. So I'm gonna start with Nuln Oil. 
Yes, Nuln Oil, something that I don't actually typically use, but in this army, I use it liberally. So I'm gonna slap it down really thick, moving around on every item that isn't the fatigues or skin. And I'm going to use Fugan Orange on all of the fatigues. I'm gonna apply this fairly lightly, using it more of a tint than an actual wash. But of course, letting it settle into all the recesses. And as you might've guessed, I came up with this color scheme to batch paint whole squads. Then now that all the washes have finally dried, it's time to start all the highlighting. You can really do that in any order you like. So personally, I'm gonna start with the gloves. And for that, I'm gonna be fairly minimalistic and go in with a very light layer of XV88. This is gonna create a really desaturated highlight and I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of ungore flesh to get these extra leathery pops. After that, I felt that the green was lacking a little bit of pop. So I just went over the edges again with more of the same green. And now I'll start highlighting all the fatigues. And I have actually purposefully left this until the end because this is where all the magic starts to happen. Taking a bone color and just mixing it in with a little bit of the Avalon sunset color, I'm gonna start highlighting all the folds of the fabric or anywhere that I feel that the light would hit the fabric. For any final sharp highlights, I'll use pure bone. After that, it's time for all the little details, such as the sigil on the left shoulder, which I'll paint a light gray and then sketch in the emblem using a red. Then I'll do the funny little symbol that's on all the Steel Legionaries helmets. So take your time and again, I'll just mark that in with red and then do the yellow stripe capping it off. We're on the home stretch and I'm gonna highlight the black goggles. This will be fairly subtle, but I'll grab a storm vermin fur and I'll very gently follow the curvature of the bottom of the goggles. I'll do a little highlight using Administratum Gray and then I'll finish it off with a spot highlight of a white in the very top left-hand corner of the goggles. That'll sort of give the gemstone effect and will make it look really reflective. Then I'll apply the very suitable technical paint, Armageddon Dunes to the base, creating all the nice sand. Then when that's dry, I'll give it a little dry brush of bone, trim off the base, and there we have a legionary completely finished. And now it's time to move on to something that I've been really looking forward to all video, and that is to start working on an actual character. The Steel Legion have these really cool officer models. They have the extended helms, even more by the way of their big trench coats, whatever you want to call that. Uh, their big machete power weapons and their love for bolt pistols, but particularly the skull visage painted onto all of their gas masks to mess with the superstitious orcs that they have spent generations fighting on their home planet. So that is going to be the absolute pinnacle of this video. I'm going to sculpt an officer for my Steel Legion. Let's go. Now opening the Cadian kit again, I'm faced with a dilemma and that is that I love the sculpts for the old Steel Legion officers. So I want to create something that emulates a bit of their characteristics, but also something just a bit different. And so what I'm gonna do is actually try and emulate one of the characters in the classic Steel Legion artworks. This is one of the pieces that has always inspired me and made me want to collect Steel Legion. This image of the Steel Legion officer leading his troops into battle as the orcs surge towards their entrenched position is so vivid to me and I absolutely love this to death. So this is what I'm gonna try and create, uh, wish me luck. So to get the posture right, I grabbed some of the sergeant legs, which just happened to have the foot in the right position. However, Games Workshop, I would really like it if I could have the option to reverse which hands were holding the swords and the pistols. Anyway, this model is gonna be reversed, so whatever. And now I get the opportunity to show off what I was talking about with making the gloves. I simply dip the knife in and shave away at the cuffs until the very edge of the cuff is now blended in with the glove, creating a very big glove. You know what they say about Steel Legion with big gloves? A very big responsibility to protect the Imperium. <laughs> <laughs> and now I run into another issue, which is the Steel Legion officers actually have a different helmet design to the rest of the troopers. It's actually a lot more like the Death Corps of Krieg helmets. So I'm just gonna steal one of those. I'll trim it down and take the face off. Uh, unfortunately, taking the face off means that there is no longer a bottom part of a head. So I'm going to sacrifice a Cadian head and glue those bits together, creating this horrific amalgamation of a no-faced officer. Now, some of you might be wondering, Murray, you just cut off a perfectly good Death Corps of Krieg gas mask to sculpt a gas mask. And yes, you would be correct. I decided to remove that gas mask because I wanted it to be my own. That's basically the only reason. To make it look more impactful and to make it look more like the art. That's what inspires me for any of my conversions or armies. It's all about the art and I want to recreate that feel. So yes, I am re-sculpting a gas mask having just removed a gas mask. It's also the reason I didn't just use the Death Corps full trench coats. The Steel Legion one's a little bit different, but I didn't want to just start with that. And of course, I want to be able to make lots of these. So it makes sense to use models that I could get lots of, but also makes sense to be sculpting the masks as I'm gonna be doing so many of them. So yes, 
I'm sculpting the mask. To kick off the sculpting, I'm gonna start smack bang in the middle of the chest. Once again, covering the remnants of any of the chest armor that was there. Then I'll draw a line down the center, creating the single breasted jacket, which I believe is the trademark of the Steel Legion. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll work around the entire torso, filling in any gaps, and then I'll move onto the head and start on that gas mask. Just like the trooper, I'm gonna start off with a wad of green stuff and push it into place. However, then things are gonna change slightly as the gas mask is also a little different for the officers. Instead of the big ski mask, the officers actually have a lot more of a spectacled appearance. And while the Death Corps have fully circular lenses, the Steel Agent officers have more of a half moon appearance. These half circular lenses serve as the basis to create that skull visage, which we even further emphasize by creating nose holes. Then I'm gonna push in the cheeks to make it look even more gaunt and skull-like. I'll create the oxygen rebreather device, and then I'll roll out a sausage of green stuff to create the pipe. Before putting it on, I'm gonna arrange it into a bit of an S shape, so it already matches to the best of my ability where it's going to go and how it's going to sit on the model. Then it's just a delicate procedure of pushing it into position and not ruining everything. I'll make the ridges with a knife, not being too worried about making it a bit lumpy. Again, this makes just a little bit of character, which I don't mind. And then some extra details. I'm going to do little Aquila buckles going down the front of his jacket, just like the original model has. I'll create tiny dots of green stuff and push them into place, reshaping them into triangles and adding just that little bit of detail to make them look like the Aquila. After that, I'm going to start working on extending the coat and you can see that I've already bulked up some of this area with some extra green stuff just to add a little bit more purchase that I can push against. And there we have it. My officer is complete. So all I need to do now is allow him to dry and I can paint him up. <laughs> there we go, he's all done. I am so proud of this. I could definitely improve in some areas, but overall, this is a lot more than I thought I'd be capable of doing. So I'm really, really proud of that. It's a little man. Yay! It's time to paint this guy up as well. So let's jump straight into that. For painting the officer, I'm going to use the exact same techniques that I used for painting the trooper. So I'm gonna get straight down to talking about the details that I added here, namely painting the skull. The gas mask, I'll paint exactly how I did with the trooper, starting with the dark, rich red browns. But then when it comes to highlighting, I'm gonna use more of an ochre color and block in the shape of the skull. Thankfully, most of my sculpting has already done the work for me. So really, I only need to worry about painting the teeth. Then it's simply a matter of highlighting with some ivory color until I get a really nice bone appearance. Then just like the trooper, I'll finish off the base and we have my finished Steel Legion character that is completely unique and does not exist anywhere outside of my hands right here. This entire process has been an absolute joy to work on and I'm so happy that I actually decided to go ahead and do this. So please let me know down in the comments if you really enjoyed this sort of thing as well as your invested interest will also make more of this sort of content a lot more likely to happen. So please, please, please tell me you like this as well. I want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons. It is your continued support that allows us to create amazing things like this. I got to revisit and recreate an army that I thought I'd never really touch again. This is basically a dream come true for me and it's all thanks to your support. Thank you so much. And if you're interested in joining up to our patron and joining in some of the hobby fun, including our monthly mini review, you can find the links in the description below. And boom, I've done it. I've created a one infantry trooper and one officer, which isn't much by way of any Imperial Guard army. So if you really would like to see more and hopefully have stayed until the end of this video, I would love to hear your thoughts and your enthusiasm as I go forwards and I'm absolutely gonna finish at least one squad on my own. But I really want to know how much you wanna see more of this army. Do you wanna see specialist squads? Do you want to see some of the veterans, some of the actual iron coats? I would love to hear your thoughts and I would love to do this again. This has been a lot of fun and thank you so much for watching. Until then, please let me do more Steel Legion. They're so cool. If I say cool once more in this video, I'm going to be very upset. For the Emperor. <laughs>